Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how I made a black mirror. And I'd like to thank Salesforce for sponsoring a portion of this video. Now a black mirror seems like an oxymoron. If something's black, it means it's absorbing all the light. And if something's a mirror, it means it's reflecting all of the light. So how could it be both? Well today I'll be showing you how you can make something that both absorbs and reflects. So to start off, I have this paint here that's been advertised as black mirror paint. So I got curious, what does that even mean? Let's test it out and see what it looks like when we paint it on something. So the best you can do with this type of method is to get a really glossy black. And what glossy means is that there's a tiny layer on top that reflects a lot of the light, but most of the light goes through. And the light that goes through gets completely absorbed. So the only light you can see is the light that was reflected off of it. But it's not a lot compared to the total amount of light that was shined on it. So black mirrors made with this method aren't really impressive because you get a very dim reflection back. So can we actually do better than this? Can we make a black mirror that has 100% reflectivity? Well, as odd as that sounds, the answer is yes. Let me show you how. So this is just a regular mirror. Okay, so you can see me filming right here. Hey everyone. But watch what happens when we take this mirror and hold it over a candle. It gets covered with nanoparticles of soot. So we can make it so it's completely black. Look at that, completely black now. But then an amazing thing happens when we stick it in water. Watch this. So it's initially black, but then watch what happens when I turn it. Past a certain angle, it actually becomes 100% reflective. So when it's straight on, it's as black as can be, but turn it too far on either angle, then it becomes a really clear mirror. 100% reflective. No reflection. And turn it this way, easy reflection. Before we continue our experiment, this portion of my video was sponsored by Salesforce. If you have a small business, you know that it's essential to make your customers happy. In order to do that, you need a reliable method to organize customer interactions and relationships. Salesforce is the number one customer management solution for every kind of business. Salesforce makes it easier for your business to adapt to evolving customer needs in an increasingly digital work from anywhere world. You've probably spent a lot of time on your website, so make it work harder for you by leveraging lead capture forms available in Salesforce on your site. You'll be able to generate new business and develop relationships with customers from your CRM. When you need to get a message out to your customers or share a special promo, mass email is the way to go, but you can't forget about personalization. Salesforce helps you send messages to a specific list of recipients, getting as broad or as targeted out as you would like. You can help customers find the answers they're looking for about your business themselves by creating a Help Center page. If you want to check out Salesforce, you can request a demo or get started for just $25 per user per month. And thanks again to Salesforce for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now let's get back to our experiment. The reason this is happening is because soot is actually hydrophobic. And so when we dip it in the water, it creates a small pocket of air around the object. And so what we end up with is an air-water interface around the entire shape of the object. If I coat a sphere with it, this is what it looks like. Above the water, it's completely black. Then dip it under. You can see around the edges, it's completely reflective, like it's encased in some type of glass. Now that is the thin layer of air around it. Air and water have different refractive indexes because they have these different densities. And what that means is that if you shine light through it, it makes it curve different. That's why when you put a stick in water, it can make it look like that stick is broken because the light is bending differently when it enters the water from the air. But the coolest thing about this is once you're past a certain critical angle, then total internal reflection occurs. That means that the light doesn't just bend outside of the object at a different angle, but it actually reflects completely as if the air-water interface is a complete mirror. For example, you can see this effect here of a swimmer swimming below the level of water, and if you're at the right angle, it looks like they're under a mirror. When you're looking at the mirror straight on, you're not past the critical angle yet, and so the light ray can just go directly through the air-water interface and be absorbed by the black soot. 
But if you turn that mirror enough, then you get past the critical angle, so the light rays can no longer get past the air-water interface, so it no longer reaches the soot below it. And so the reflection you're seeing isn't actually the reflection from the mirror below the soot, but it's actually the reflection of the air-water interface above the soot. So in this way, you can get a true black mirror. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, and hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And check out Action Lab Shorts if you haven't yet. That's my second channel where I do videos similar to this channel, but I do them in less than a minute. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.